Hey everyone, it's Kenlin. And there's a lot of talk right now around Pluto moving into Aquarius. At the time of this filming, it's zero degrees Aquarius. The sun is also here. The sun is in Aquarius. And so we have Aquarian energy being lit up and it's on the minds of many awakened people who are wanting to track the cosmos in terms of our evolution. And I'm gonna give you in this video just a short understanding of how to hold the context of this transit of Pluto and Aquarius. I'm gonna make many other videos about Pluto and Aquarius, but I think it's really important because who I get to be in this play is a stand for evolutionary feminine leadership. Because to me, this is what's being called for. This is why we're here. This is why we incarnated at this time to be midwives of the change of an age. And this particular astrological transit helps us get our arms around the mission that we've been called to. So there's a couple things to distinguish. One is your natal Pluto. So I'm going to do a little astrology talk, but hopefully at a high enough level that you'll understand. So let's imagine you are a baby, that you're just being born today, right now, as I say this. That means the snapshot of the cosmos from a Western astrology point of view, and there's many systems, but this is that point of view that I'm speaking from is zero degrees Pluto in Aquarius. So you will have natally, meaning at your birth, zero degrees Aquarius, Pluto in zero degrees Aquarius. And guess what? That's the, you're an evolutionary. You're a revolutionary. That's the, that's the inception, the beginning point. And so many of us have not just been born today. <laughs> so we get to, we have a different natal Pluto. And that means that where Pluto was when you were born is your natal Pluto. And that's not what we're talking about when we talk about Pluto moving into Aquarius, because it, it takes 246 years for Pluto to make it through all of the signs. Whereas if your birthday is today, it takes the sun 365 days to come back to your birthday again. So different celestial bodies travel at different speeds. And Pluto happens to be an outer planet, not even a planet, but in astrology, an outer planet and very, very slow moving. So people never have Pluto returns, but countries do. And the United States just celebrated, <laughs> if we kind of call it celebration, it's Pluto return. So it's reckoning with power. The country is 246 years old from the date that people give it its inception. And therefore it's reckoning with power. So people say that that means that the U.S. has enjoyed its seat as one of the leaders of the free world and it will probably not continue that way. Because Pluto's like, well, how good were you at that? Did you really get the lesson? How good are you at power? And so far we're seeing that we're really corrupt. And that's what the wrecking ball of Pluto and Capricorn, government represents Capricorn, top-down hierarchy. <laughs> come in and destroy that. I'll say more about that in other videos, but just for now. So let's go back to that transiting Pluto. So Pluto's moved into zero degrees Aquarius. What does that mean for you? And we just did this inside my membership. I had everyone go through and find out in their chart, where is Aquarius in their chart? So we have 12 houses and every house has a theme. And it moves counterclockwise from the beginning, which is your ascendant or also called your rising sign. So that would be in house one. And then, and then it goes from there in order around the zodiac counterclockwise. And that's how you find 
where uh, Aquarius is in your chart. What is what house does it rule? Not rule natally, like Aquarius is in my 10th house. The 10th house is ruled by Capricorn, but that is my house of Aquarius in my chart. And if you know that information, then you now know what my ascendant is because you can work backward. That's kind of advanced. So why do we care about this? Well, the last 15 years, we were in the final stages. We've been in Pluto and Capricorn of this change of an age. And it had to end with the wrecking ball of these institutions because what comes after Capricorn, which is tradition, institutions, top down, is the opposite, which is decentralization, grassroots of the people, the public. So we went from the highlighting of government to now the highlighting of the public. Those are the big themes. And again, I'll talk about that in different videos. You can check my channel. But for you, you'll want to know for the next 19 years, and indeed, like if you're my age, we're going to be talking like the rest of your life, this influence is going to shape the rest of your life. It's going to remake you because Pluto cares about transformation and all transformation is a death and a rebirth. So I'll just say that when Pluto was on my son, when um, it went into Sagittarius when I was 29 years old, I just got out of my Saturn return or probably I was in my Saturn return and bam, Pluto goes on my sun sign. At that time I was in law school. Um, I think I was in law school. Yeah. And starting to get my skill sets and practicing law. Um, I worked for different things, but also what happened is my marriage started to fall apart because it was based on who I was. Uh, Sagittarius rules beliefs. So my, my belief systems were changing. And Pluto didn't exit Sagittarius until I was 41 years old. So it wasn't directly on my son the whole time, but it was in the, the sign of my son for that long. And it's going to be longer in the sign of Aquarius. And so those moments like 29 to 41, I mean, my goddess, you already go through so much change. And I was just being like worked like dough, like, you know, just like dough to die to certain things on the inside so that I could do the work that I'm doing now. I mean, Pluto really sets you up for who you're becoming. And that was Pluto on my son. So now I get to look at where is Pluto in my chart? Well, Pluto transiting my 10th house because I don't have planets in there, but my 10th house is the house of Aquarius in my chart. So I hope you're following that. And if you're not, you can get a whole house astrology reading and that will help you. We had uh, in our class, we, we drew it out. We drew the map with 12 slices of pie in a circle and the horizontal and verti the vertical and horizontal axes. And we, we noted each house. So you can do that just now on your own. But that'll give you an idea of the place that's up for transformation in your world. So it's up for career transformation in my world. So I already know because I've been through Pluto transits on my sun sign that, that it's going to be a real transformation and transformations mean death and rebirth. And so uh, those of you who know me know I'm creating the Evolving Sisters Network. It's a platform. I'm building it. Uh, my Taurus North node is the master builder. So brick by brick, I'm building it. I'm playing the long game. And Pluto and Aquarius, especially there is saying to me, and it's going to say to you, wherever that is, I want you to think about things differently. 
So I just did a video, go check it out on receiving your new mission. Because the old missions, the old missions are out. That was the old mind that created the old missions. And so we're coming in with the new mind and we have to have a new mission for the new mind. And that's a whole other video. It was the transmission on Gene Key 41 and receiving your new mission. So go check that out. So I hope that illuminates for you where you can find Aquarius in your chart, in that mandala of the zodiac, of the signs, to understand a little more about what is going through a death and a rebirth in your life. Today on the call, we had women who's whose house of Aquarius is in their seventh house. So it, relationships, partnerships, committed partnerships, they are going to go through the crucible in committed partnerships. How's that going to look? No idea. <laughs> because as Pam Gregory says, and I love that she says this, is that your blueprint is only 50% of the equation. This is the snapshot at your birth where the, where the, energies that want to play through you. That doesn't mean that that's the only thing that can happen. It's just, those are the energies that want to play through you. But then the other 50% is how do you dance? Your level of spiritual awareness, how you lean in to do the work. You know, I was just talking to my 81-year-old mother about parts work. And it's all new to her because, you know, back in the day, nobody, nobody really even engaged with their trauma. So she had a point where she was triggered and she was sharing with me. And I think that's evolution, like that she was sharing with me that she got triggered and that she was open to hearing that that trigger was not about the other person, but it was about her. And what wants to be seen inside of her. So to me, that's, that's how you can get alongside. That's the 50%. Are you willing to play where I'm going to get alongside of it? I'm, I'm going to see that I want to blame someone, but then I'm, I know better. Actually, it's an invitation to go inward. It's an invitation to meet the lost parts of myself and to come into integration. And so that's really the invitation. That's how we die gracefully. And that's how we get reborn. So I hope this helped. Check out the other videos on Pluto and Aquarius and let me know what you think.